The welcome sign that stands just outside of Everly, Iowa is slowly fading away. But just a mile or two away in town, work is underway, making sure the history of this small Northwest Iowa community doesn't vanish as well. I don't think we really knew what we were going to come across when we started. You know, when a small town loses its school, some of the town's identity kind of goes away with that. Determined not to let that happen, Gokin and a group of community members started a push to find, catalog, and display the history of this now shrinking town. And at the center of it all, basketball state tournament trophies won by the girls basketball teams in the 1960s. Cindy Fliss was on the 1966 team that won it all. I think it's important. I mean, this is part of this town's history. And if we don't tell the story, then it'll, it will die. Today, that state championship trophy and several others won by the Everly cattle feeder teams are on display here at the Everly Heritage Museum. Here's all of our state tournament trophies. Oh, look, they got bigger as we got better. When you imagined these wonderful trophies sitting in somebody's barn somewhere, <laughs> you know, that was kind of a scary thought. Gokin was on Everly's 1968 state runner-up team. Everybody knew who the cattle feeders were. I, you know, in 12 years we went, you know, 10 times to the state tournament. Everly from Northwest Iowa is unbeaten. And Playing in that game against Union Witten, that was absolutely crazy. I never heard the crowd in any other game, and that game it was just nuts. Opened in November after nearly three years of work, the Everly Heritage Museum shares more than sports stories. A lot of very interesting, very historically significant to our community, stuff that's been in people's attics and in their storage sheds and their basements. 1900 items and unlike the town itself, still growing. The stories that they come in with have just been unbelievable. The history being shared just as incredible. We've got one corner of the museum that is going to be strictly for military. Larry Dillingham was a three-star Brigadier General. Willard Spangler was in a bomber um, in World War II. When his plane was hit, uh, he managed to fly the plane long enough for the last remaining uh, crew member to parachute out of the plane before it crashed. Then he was captured a day later and spent the last about six months of the war as a prisoner of war in a German prisoner of war camp. In July, the fire department turned 100 years old, so we put a display together of all their stuff, dating back pictures and members of the fire department. Decades of history, some known and some not known until now. The Bonnie and Clyde story, you know, about them robbing our bank. We really didn't have any idea that those kinds of stories we were going to be discovering when we did this. From the faces of years gone by to telephones that don't fit in your pocket, a 1939 state baseball title, and educational and business memorabilia from a simpler time, each offering a chapter in the story of Everly. This small area had talented people and, and they really worked it doing well in whatever they did. Hopefully we've slowed down that disappearance of our town because there aren't very many businesses left in Everly. A renewed sense of pride, I think, coming together and remembering things, and that's exactly why we did this, to keep those memories alive.